Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to yet another episode of the Gloving Paradigm. I am your host Peter aka LPD8 Dubuque and this week's going to be a very fun week for me because I get to cover one of the most favorite topics in the Gloving community that I don't really see a whole lot of talk about but it does happen and people do utilize it and I actually want to cover it in this episode. And what am I talking about? Well it's really simple. I'm going to be talking about themes and motifs and gloving. And what I'm going to be covering in this episode is pretty much the definitions of those two words, as well as how we can incorporate them into our performances to not only enrich our performances, but to make them more memorable and stand out from other glovers. With that being said, let's go ahead and kick this thing off with the very first question, what is a theme? Well, the definition of the word theme is an idea that recurs or pervades a work of art or literature. So in this case, when it comes to gloving, in my opinion, it can be anything that you want to convey to your audience through the use of your flashing patterns, your color sets, the gloves that you wear to the outfit you wear, and even to the extension of any accessories such as a, ma a mask or a hat or goggles or whatever the case may be to help emulate the theme that you're trying to convey. So a great example of this, in my opinion, is a glove set that I actually came up with a long while ago, and it's because it's one of those things that I hold dear to my heart, and I find it to be one of those most inspirational things for me, and what this glove set was entailing was a theme from Legend of Zelda, and if anyone who hasn't known this for a while now, that I am a huge Legend of Zelda fan, I absolutely love the whole franchise. Yes, I understand there are a couple of quote-unquote bad eggs in the franchise. However, I do not think that actually tarnishes the franchise as a whole. So, in particular, when it comes to Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time is probably one of my most favorite ones. It's just a timeless classic, and it has so much depth in its lore and its world building and its character arcs and things of that nature when it comes to a lot of the NPCs that I actually designed a five mode glove set to reflect the five temples that you actually have to go and complete in the game. So pretty much it should be relatively straightforward to understand what I did and it's basically I would have each each mode pretty much have a set of colors. So of course the forest temple being the first temple you go and battle in it's going to be a lot of greens with a lot of lighter greens and more greens and a couple of yellows thrown in. Then you move on to the fire temple with red, water temple with blue, so on and so forth. You pretty much get the idea. So to me, that is basically the theme of that glove set. And I, of course, I refer to this glove set as the Lozut glove set, which is an acronym of Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, if you haven't really caught on to that. However, that's just one of the many things that I've actually attempted in terms of my performances. Not only was the color sets that I was using trying to convey the, the theme of what I was replicating, but I was also taking in consideration the move sets I should use in each mode to help convey what I'm trying to convey. So like with the Forest Temple, my moves I would want to try to replicate or at least emulate the 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 motion of you know, natures with like trees sprouting and growing from the ground and growing branches and showing that they grow, you know, showing growth and things like that. And of course, you know, things with like fire, I wanted to display how fire would look like when it's moving around and things like that. You know, just to kind of give a good idea of what I was trying to work with. So not only is your color sets going to be something that you want to consider to help evoke your theme. But flash pattern manipulation is also another thing that will help with the emulation. So what do I mean by flash pattern manipulation? Well, basically you're kind of manipulating how the flash pattern operates with the color choices that you make. So with blanks being a thing in programmable lights, as I would put it, they allow you to actually alter what the flash pattern is actually supposed to be doing normally when it's just all set colors. And that's what I love about the programmable so much is that you can manipulate your, how your flash patterns are going to pretty much evoke themselves by the int induction of blanks throughout the set. So that's just something I always want to explain to people is that if you feel like none of the flashing patterns are going to help actually emulate what you're trying to emulate through your lights, then you want to want to try to experiment with the flash pattern and blanks to see if you can actually come up with something. So a very great example that I always like to use is if you're somebody like me who is a huge fan of the OMG like bits, especially the four mode ones, 
then you would th certainly understand my love for the fourth mode on that ship specifically because I like that whole strobing. It's two colors, yet it's strobing, and it kind of gives that whole detachment feeling. It, there's a whole slew of things I can talk about with this this set but the way to replicate that is pretty much using the strobe flash patterns and then putting the two colors that you want followed by three blanks and boom there you go you have actually pretty much replicated that chip fourth mode in essence so you know something of that nature that you do need to take in consideration that if you feel like an old chip has a flash pattern that you want to replicate, you might be able to with your programmables. So don't ever think that you aren't able to unless you actually experimented and tried and tried and tried. And of course, once you actually get to that point, in my opinion, you should probably start asking around, see if there's any other ideas that people might come up with that actually help further your exploration on that. Okay, so you know, another huge thing that I had somebody actually point out to me is that they actually use the accelerometers that actually help evoke their themes. And so if you actually have the accelerometer feature, that is something that you can also utilize to help evoke the theme that you're trying to go for, or motif in the sense, which I'll get to in a little bit what a motif is. But you do have ways to actually experiment and try out new ideas to try to help emulate the theme that you're trying to convey. Whether it be, you know, Legend of Zelda or Star Wars or Star Trek or whatever franchise that you feel that you subscribe to, you know, uh, it, those those are the things you kind of want to think about. And, you know, I understand that, you know, a lot of people don't have a lot of time and effort that they want to put into actually coming up with stuff like that. But that's OK. That is totally fine. There are other people who have actually dedicated their time to doing that. Uh, a lot of the mode swaps that you uh, groups that you actually find on Facebook. There are people who are literally dedicated to just coming up with new modes and all that stuff for people. So definitely, if you're one of those people who just don't have the time to actually experiment, you might want to subscribe to one of those groups to see if they actually help, especially if it's the mode swap group specific to the chip that you have. You know, so that's something I always want to try to let people know about so they actually know. Okay. So the next question I know some people are probably going to be asking me is what is a motif? Well, the definition of the word motif is a distinctive feature or dominant idea in an artistic or literary co composition. So one thing that I will definitely tell you that this was something that was been done a lot so many times, probably I, I don't know the exact type of era, but if I had but a good, good buffer room area time length wise, I would say anywhere from probably like 2013 to 2016, 17 ish, where there was a motif that people were utilizing in their glove sets by having one particular flash pattern stick out from the rest. Okay, so a very classic example, at least in my eyes, as I find it as a classic example, is using something like a solid type flash pattern or a ribbon type flash pattern, if you want to put it that way, to be the sole flash pattern out of the rest of them. So where would they actually put that? Well, they would actually set that one on their middle finger. And I can totally understand why people would do that. It is the longest finger. So when you're doing your whole whips and stuff, it's going to be the one that's farthest out and it's going to be able to be no more noticeable to the audience. So, you know, whether if you use like a tracer or you use the chroma mode feature to do this or what have you, that that's what I would call a motif. It's a very dominant, distinctive feature that you would see in the show is oh one one of their lights is actually set to a different flashing pattern therefore it sticks out to the viewer more okay so that that's a very basic idea of a gloving motif is if i want to put it that way uh, i know some people might say well you can also do that by having like your index and your ring finger being one and then your thumb middle and ring, uh, pinky being a different one that is also another great example of a motif. That's something that was very common, especially in the Middle Ages, as I probably would put it currently in terms of the gloving history. You know, that's something I always thoroughly enjoy doing. What one of the main things I actually like doing is actually having modes set up. They're all one flashing pattern, and as I would change from one mode into another, the in between parts, which you know, in this example, either I'm changing my thumbs, middle, or and pinkies or my index and rings at the same time and just kind of keep going from there and let that in between the two sets actually be its own set so it was kind of like kind of like having instead of just like 
for the example five, I would actually have more like nine or ten flashing uh, sets in terms of combinations. And I actually like doing that because it really it really brings on a whole new layer into into the performance that allows you to actually show more of your craft, in my opinion. Knowing that as a motif, what are certain things that people can do in terms of motifs? Well, I would say certain sets of colors can be used as motifs, which if you don't understand what I'm meaning by sets of colors, I mean things like pastel colors, neon colors, base colors, you know, primary, secondary, or tertiary colors if you want to use the color theory part of it, you know. Having sets of colors will help evoke the theme through that motif. So like say you wanted to have something that was revolving around candy. Pastels would be perfect because pastels kind of you know, emulate the things of like ice cream and cotton candy and things of that nature. So you know, using pastels to make a very tasteful glove set as your theme, that's, that's how you use a motif to help with your theme. You know, you can use neon lights basically to help accentuate the, the theme that you're going for. If you, maybe you're doing, looking like an 80s hairband freak from, you know, who you know, looks like someone who just came out of a Motley Crue concert. You know, neon colors would be a great example because neon colors was a very huge thing during the 80s. You know, so that's where you have to sit there and think about when it comes to what theme that you're trying to convey, what do you know of the theme that you can incorporate into gloving. So like I said with 80s examples, you can dress up like Van Halen and of course use neon colors in your lights to edge up, you know, emulate the whole 80s feel thing. Now I will certainly put this out there for everybody. I'm not a huge 80s fan. I am more of a 70s, 60s fan. My mom is a huge 80s fan. She's the closet hairband fan. So she loves Bon Jovi, Def Leppard, White Snake, Scorpion, Foreigner, all that stuff. So. I, I tend to use the 80s as an example because 80s were just was a really ridiculous time period in terms of experimentation, in terms of pop culture, fashion, music, all of that stuff. It was an age, in my opinion, a decade of just experimentation and seeing how far out you could go. Okay, so <laughs> I do apologize if anyone else who also laments the 80s like I do, and to a degree that I, I totally understand. So knowing that as a motif, what are, are the things that you can use as motifs? Well, gloving archetypes can be used as motifs. So you can have a very flowy motif to your show, or you can have a very techy motif to your show. You know, you 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 know, conjuring can even be viewed as a motif, uh, or just in in tandem with the other things that you're using as motifs. You know, those kind of archetypes can be used. Impacting can be used as a motif. For example now i'm not saying that there is i'm just saying that it can be used as one okay so those are the things i do definitely want to kind of explain to a lot of people is that you know when you're using gloving archetypes as a motif do not let it literally dominate everything that you're doing due to the point that it's no longer a motif it is literally the essence of the show you know what i mean so that's something you definitely want to keep in mind when it comes to motifs so what are ways that people can actually fortify their theme with a motif? Well, it, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about this. There's some that I've actually done myself. You know, wearing a ridiculous out outfit to help exemplify the theme that you're doing. You know, having the outfit show the people the theme that you're trying to convey so when they actually see the show, they know what theme you're going for. It's probably one of the most obvious and simplest ways of doing it. But... Simplicity is actually really good to have, you know, if it's something that's simple to do, then it doesn't take a whole lot of effort on your part and it allows you to use that for your show, you know, uh, a great, <laughs> probably one of the best and classic examples when it comes to the gloving art form and using a motif to help fortify your theme is wearing a mask. So one of these things that I did when I was first starting out in gloving is I used to wear a Jack Skellington hat that I would kind of use as a makeshift mask to a degree. Uh, I, I will certainly say that a hat probably wasn't the best idea considering that I would pull that hat so far forward so they can actually see the Jack Skellington face on it. That I tend to blinded myself from what I was actually doing and I can certainly tell you that it's probably not the best idea due to the fact that I've actually hit a couple people in the face or brushed up their face a little bit. So definitely would kind of admonish using a hat 
but a hat will do will be suffice to actually convey the theme that you're going for. Another thing that I did was use a an alien mask that a friend gave me that actually glowed in the dark. And so when I was actually at events, I would actually go find the black lights to actually, you know, light up the face a little bit to actually let it glow. And at the time, <laughs> and I really wish I can actually find these again because these were such, such an amazing pair of gloves, in my opinion. And these gloves were actually able to glow in the dark. And when I actually bought these gloves, I bought them at, oh God, what was this place called? I can't even remember. It was one of those places where they were also selling the tickets to raise and stuff like that. And it was kind of like a head shop, but not really. But these gloves, they, they actually came with a UV light that you can actually write messages on. And it'll actually glow for a little while. What I really, really liked about these gloves is once I actually turn off all my lights after a little while, you actually will still see the little dots from the light bulbs actually illuminating on the gloves, thus making those little glow-in-the-dark dots. And it kind of add a whole new layer to the show because once the lights are off, people can still see this little faint glow from my gloves. So a lot of people really like that. So if I'm able to ever find those gloves again, you can bet your sweet little butt that I'm going to be buying as much as I can possibly can because those gloves were just, just absolutely amazing. But of course I am digressing on that. So, however, I will certainly say that that also does bring a nice perfect little segue to specialty gloves. Now, I will certainly explain to people what specialty gloves are. I don't even think most of them are even made now anymore because there there was a thing there was a thing for them for a while and it, I guess it kind of just fell out of favor over the years. Uh, if you haven't seen them, there there were white gloves out there that they actually printed skeletal bones on them so you can actually have skeleton hands when you're doing gloves. That's that's something I also did when I was wearing the Jack Skellington hat is I would actually wear those gloves to really help accentuate the theme of me being Jack Skellington. And of course when it came to the glow in the dark gloves that really helped accentuate the theme of me being an alien visitor type deal, you know. <laughs> so you know that those are the things that you can look at when it comes to helping fortify your theme, especially when it came to specialty gloves. I know Blackout gloves you might consider as a specialty glove said if you want to call it that that's fine I uh, I just see them as the you know the alternative that's usually the primary alternative is either you wear all white or you do the blackouts now I can understand that certain people have some loathing entirely opinions of blackouts and how they don't really help with the shows but I will certainly say when it comes to blackout gloves in my opinion they're just better in person and they're never really gonna be good on camera uh, I, you know, it really all depends on the, the quality of the camera as well, but that's, again, me digressing. So, you know, I, I do remember them making these specialty gloves where they were just covered in sequins and they were a little bit more reflective. And in all honesty, I've never seen anyone actually use them in a performance before. So if you're one of those few people who use them, kudos to you. You are one of those people who really push yourself to be apart from everybody else. You know, instead of the basic norm of white gloves only type deal. You know, so I'll certainly tell you that a lot of people actually have made their own specialty gloves by drawing on them. You can do that. I can certainly tell you that the quality when you do that might suffer. It all depends on your artistic ability to draw on your gloves and make it look clean as possible. Because I've seen some really, some really, really muddy looking ones that people have done. So... Definitely keep that in mind if you're going to draw on them. Try to use a marker that's more tailored to drawing on fabric than using just a Sharpie because I can certainly tell you the Sharpie marks that I saw people do on their gloves was so abhorredly horrendous that it really could kind of disconnect your audience from your show. So definitely keep that in mind. Another good example of what you can actually do to help with your motifs fortifying your theme is your color selection. You know, it, it, it's where your motifs are going to be best used is with your colors. And it's the most simplest one in my opinion as well. You know, again, when it comes to like the color sets like pastels and neons and bases and what have you. You know, even psychedelic colors. There is actually a psychedelic version of every color in the rainbow. So, you know, not saying that. Well, you could probably try to actually replicate those colors on, on lights, but I, I highly doubt it. Uh... You know, there, there are certain things that kind of be a little bit prohibitive, but like I always tell people, restrictions should be breeding creativity from you. You know, it, it allows you to learn to be creative with what restrictions you have, okay? 
So not only with the color selections, but your flashing patterns are also going to be very crucial to help you emulate the theme that you're trying to go for. You know, whether you're using the flashing patterns as the motif or just using it as a way to emulate the motions of the theme that you're doing. So, you know, a great example, going back to the Lazute glove set, uh, I, I use, you know, more of a basic strobe for forest and I use at the time I was using hyper strobe, but with, you know, with the chroma controls now and actually having so many options I can do, I actually used the vex mode for the fire temple because I wanted the red to be the base and then have the highlight colors of orange and yellow. And one of them actually having a single blue in them to represent the eye of the Volvagia. You know, that's, that's how I would go about it. And actually, and of course, when it came to the water temple, I used dots because I just felt like that was perfect. Uh, especially with the tint control and having that slight little flicker happening, it just really helped evoke that water sensation, in my opinion at least. So, you know, flashing patterns are something that you definitely want to consider when you're actually setting up these sets. And of course, tint control should never be overlooked. You know, when it comes to certain colors, they change drastically depending on the tint that you use. So, definitely keep that in mind when you're actually doing your color selection because if you use a color on a different setting, than the one that you're initially intending that might actually really help evoke the theme that you're going for. So definitely keep that in mind. Ways to help create a theme is very, <laughs> very, very simple in my opinion. You know, per, uh, persona outfits. You know, I, I asked a lot of people these questions on online and I actually got a good amount of stories. Uh, when, when it came to one of them, he was talking about the, the, the shapes that this person would create, you know, make him look like insects or birds or even jellyfish for example yes i would certainly say that you know having that as a theme as well will also help fortify your theme is the, again the movesets you use so being able to create creatures to help evoke what you're trying to evoke is going to be a great way and i also asked him the one that was so memorable and this person responded with this person made it look like a bird literally shot out of their hand and the person never understood how they were able to do that but had to give them the kudos for that and i really hope that this person is listening to this episode can actually post a video so everyone can see this because that's something i would certainly love to see another person actually responded that i wanted to talk about that he he says that his glover's name is luigi so he would actually dress up like Luigi from Super Mario Brothers. Uh, he, he did say that he wanted to try to come up with glove sets to help evoke that theme as well to to that. However, I will certainly tell this person that if you want to try to use your color, you know, your color sets to help evoke the theme of you being Luigi, then you want to use your color sets as the motif for that. So, you know, a great example that I kind of suggested to him is maybe making the glove sets after the suits that they get you know you have the normal one you have the fire flower one you have the feather cape one you have the raccoon tail one you know now granted i can certainly tell you everyone's gonna be like well that's brown and you can't really replicate brown in lights totally understandable but i'm just saying as the example of ideas that he can do and he said unfortunately that he couldn't find one that actually really meshed with him and i can totally understand and i always tell people that i am a very firm believer of the trial and error you just you know if you're very determined to get this down, then just keep going and going and going until you literally have tried all avenues and come up with nothing. Then I can see you forsaking it. Okay. So dressing up as a character is a great way to actually have a theme to your shows. You know, I again, I dressed up as Jack Skellington. I dressed up as, you know, an alien. You know, I was trying to look like one of the greys from South Park. So it would just be... A little bit more comical for people and surprisingly enough when i did that a lot of people actually recognized that i was trying to be south park alien and you know i i thought that was really really cool so you know if you think if you're thinking about a theme that you might feel like it's just a little too convoluted don't be afraid to try it because you're going to find a good amount of people who are going to recognize what you're trying to go for and then of course they're going to tell all of all their friends about it because it's you know something to them that makes it memorable for them okay so i definitely want to convey that to you guys you know now before i go on to this next one i gotta preface this i <laughs> was trying to be as professional and upright about this as possible but dressing up as an animal before everyone starts shooting me in the foot about it let me try to explain i'm not saying that you should be <laughs> you should be one of those lewd people who dress up as animals but i'm just saying 
something as simple as just kind of like wearing a mask or and wearing a, a little clip-on tail would be suffice enough to actually do it, you know? Or like dressing up as a character that is an animal. Like look at Sonic the Hedgehog, for example. Or even Knuckles the Hedgehog. Or even Tails the Fox, you know? I can go on and on about these kind of characters that people can choose from. But it's, again, this is just me trying to show you the examples of how to come up with a theme, okay? So, with that being said, you know, using your color sets to help evoke the colors that are of that animals. Now, granted, I will certainly tell you, try to avoid the ones that you can't replicate the colors with, such as brown. Technically, you can't replicate black, even though you can just say, well, the blank is supposed to be black, but I'm just not going to get into that right now because that's just a little too convoluted. But I am saying that if you want to evoke an animal in terms of your theme, you know, you can do that. You can be a fox, you can be a panda, you can be a jellyfish, you can be a humpback whale if you want to be that. It all depends on what animal you want to try to evoke as your theme. You know, that's just a great example of some things that a lot of people have done. Even dressing up as like a generic character or a non-playable character, you know, like just a regular guardsman or a a, a a shinobi from Naruto. I don't know. I'm just kind of like pulling stuff out of my butt at this point when it comes to some of these ideas. So bear with me when I kind of come up with this stuff, you know, <laughs> but you have things like that. Okay. And of course, you know, dressing up as a piece of art is another great example of something. So <laughs> I, I know this is going to be kind of weird to use, but I'm just going to, I'm going to go with it as just kind of an example. So if you haven't seen this movie, it's one of those movies I highly suggest watching, especially if you consider yourself a fanboy of either Star Wars or Star Trek. And there is a movie aptly named Fanboys, and it's about Star Wars fans. And in this movie, there, in one of the opening scenes, there's a part where they meet a one friend meets another friend that they haven't talked in a while, and it's a Halloween party. And one person asks the other person, are they supposed to be a sleazy corporate person? And it's like, nope, car salesman. I just came home. I uh, just came here over from work. The person's like, and you're supposed to be something with tampons. And the person says, I'm Picasso's blue period. Okay. That, as convoluted as that sounds, that's what I kind of mean by, you know, taking on a piece of art. So let's say you wanted to be like Van Gogh's Starry Night. You know, you want to use the color schemes that he used in that. So if I had like kind of cobbled together a glove set to replicate Starry Night, I would definitely use Vex mode as the first thing. The base color would be dark blue on medium. I feel like that'd be the best. And then having, you know, a warm white, a bright yellow, and maybe peach if you kind of want to go into that route. You know, just a lot of light colors to replicate the colors of the Starry Night that he's using as the blue is supposed to represent your backdrop that's how I would go about it. So it'd be like blue on medium and then whatever colors I want on high. That way they actually stick out a little bit on idle, so on and so forth. I can go on and go on about this. I probably should do it in an own separate episode in its own right, but here we are, <laughs> you know. So dressing up as a piece of art is one great example. So to kind of close this episode off, with a couple of ideas of how to come up with themes. So of course, as you guys already know, I've used video games pretty much on a console level. You can go from Legend of Zelda to Sonic the Hedgehog to Super Mario Brothers to Star Fox. You know, the list goes on and on and on. You know, you can even dress up as these characters to do light shows and that would be really cool because you're really giving the theme of what you're supposed to be as your persona, you know. You can also use TV slash cartoons, any Anything, I, I can understand if somebody wants to come up with like a Game of Thrones themed glove set, by all means, go ahead and try. I would certainly say good luck on that, but that's just me. You know, so if, you know, if a TV show or a cartoon is something that you want to try to replicate, maybe dressing up as that character to help really sell the theme is probably going to be a great thing. Now, I can certainly tell you pretty much dressing up to help evoke your theme is pretty much going to sell your theme all the way around. But if you're somebody like me who likes to have the subtlety factor come into play, then you don't necessarily have to have an outfit. But if you really want to drive home the theme that you're trying to do, you might want to do an outfit. Just saying. Of course, movies can be tailed into the TV show cartoon things, you know. One major thing I do want to say is mythology. 
Mythology is probably one of the greatest wells of inspiration that you can probably pull from in terms of themes and motifs. You know, you can do Greek mythology, Roman mythology, which is basically the same except for a few name changes. You can do Norse mythology, you can do Eastern philosophy mythology, Western philosophy mythology, whatever the case may be in terms of mythology. That's something that you can do. You can either dress up as the characters or the things that you're trying to do in terms of your theme, or you can learn how to use the colors that your chip has to really use as the motif to evoke that theme. Okay. Those are kind of like the ideas and those are pretty much jumping off points. What I would actually like to do though, is actually leave it to you guys to tell me what ideas and themes that you've had and see what you come up with in see how well that actually emulates the theme that you're trying to convey. If it's not going to do that, we can actually have a discussion and try to find out ways to actually help you further that theme. Now, I can certainly tell you that a lot of people may or may not even do that, but if you're one of those people who want to, I will certainly tell you that it would be a very, very good thing to really push your show to actually stand out from other people, okay? so. Definitely let me know what themes you guys are coming up with, what motifs are you guys thinking of using, or what ideas of themes do you have that would actually be used to, to help further the theme that you're trying to evoke, and we can actually have a discussion on it. So, where can you actually hit me up to actually talk about this stuff? Well, you can definitely go onto my Facebook page, which is aptly named The Gloving Paradigm. You can also find me on Reddit under the username Mutton Chop Guy, and you can also hit me up at my email, which is aptly named Mutton Chop Guy at gmail.com. And of course, I have my own Discord server where you can actually hit me up directly. I know I haven't been really doing a good job about my Discord. I'm really trying to work on that. I'm sorry. I'm still working on it. Don't worry about it. I definitely would recommend everyone trying to join in on there. The more people I get, the more discussions happen, so on and so forth, okay? Definitely want to thank everybody, though, who has been liking the page so far. I do really appreciate you guys' support, even if it costs zero to no money to you at all, just to have a little bit of your time to listen to what I have to say. It is most appreciative that I have people who actually take my words of, I wouldn't say wisdom, but my words of consideration into consideration to actually learn how to approach things in different ways. Okay, and the only thing I would actually like to ask of my listeners and my followers that if you would be so kind to just give any of my episodes a like, maybe share, you know, leave a comment or even sharing it, it's literally no money to you at all. All it's requiring you is a little bit of time. I would definitely like to know if you did like or did not like this episode. All I would actually ask of you is to tell me why you did or did not like it. And give me the feedback that I need to help improve my show. I would definitely like to improve this channel as much as I possibly can to provide the best content for my listeners. Okay. So that is pretty much all I would have to say on this episode. I do once again like to thank everybody for listening and please... Just to take a little bit of your time to like, share, and comment, and please kind of just spread the love. It's literally no charge to you, it's just only a little bit of your time, and it would be most appreciative. So, that is all for my episode. I'm your host, Peter, aka LPD8 Dubuque, and I'll see you guys all next week.